Are we looking at the worst season in Minnesota Wild history? Or at least the worst since the meltdown of 2018-19 during the Paul Fenton era? The Minnesota Wild continue to look at the big uphill battle they face coming off the All-Star break, while Kirsten and I still try to answer the big question, and yours. Is this team even worth saving? As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Livia, Royal Credit Union, Jim Beam, and Grain Belt. This is Season 5, Episode 214. New drop alert! The Minnesota Wild celebrate and honor Marc-Andre Fleury's 1,000th game, and you can get in on the memorabilia action with an all-new exclusive Soda Stick and Hockey Lodge t-shirt and hat drop this Friday. Grab your piece of history with a one-of-a-kind hat or tee that commemorates one of the greatest tendies in Wild and NHL history. Drop goes live on Friday, February 9th, before the Wild hosts the Pittsburgh Penguins on the iconic night. Don't miss out on this fantastic collaboration between Soda Stick and the Hockey Lodge. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated. Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? Bar Down Beauties, episode 214. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. She's Kirsten Kroll, Miss Do It All, out in Pittsburgh right now holding her phone. So let's make this an incredibly long episode for oh. her to see how strong her arm strength is. What's going on, Kirsten? Um, so far, I already had to switch arms, and we are uh, 30 <laughs> seconds into the record of this podcast. So not off to a great start. Things are going great. I had a few full days off last week, which was amazing and incredibly needed, but it's back to business now. So I've done more interviews than I can count today. Just, but doing it all, we love it. I mean, so you're saying, what, what? I was going to say, um, add it to my stat sheet. I blocked a shot during an interview on the bench today. So I've got a huge bruise on my thigh now, nice. but I truly, I think that just goes to show, like I would make a great defenseman. I think so. I think, but we've concluded that like last week we talked about how you were going to, you know, win the one timers, probably Kale McCarr with the hardest shot, as you had also predicted. I mean, it's, it's in your, it's in your vibe. You're just a defensive vibe. I think I am. And now this huge bruise on my thigh just goes to prove like, yeah, <laughs> just, I, just, okay. I needed everyone to know that. Cause honestly, there was a coach who thought he blocked me from getting hit by the puck, like literally went in front of me. No, it was too late. The puck literally hit my thigh and he was like, I saved your life. And I just had to stand there and smile and be like, yeah. Meanwhile, my thigh is throbbing. <laughs> Mine too. So that happened literally 30 minutes ago, right before this interview. So I just really wanted everybody to know about that. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for showing up, showing up more than Nikita Kucherov did during the all-star competition. We all watched it. We all saw it. But Kirsten, in general, pass or fail on the way the all-star game and the skills competition, I do give the NHL credit for continuing to try new things. I love that they brought the draft back, except that got very cringe and very awkward very quickly because, again, hockey players, as much personality as some of them have, others don't. Um, I mean, the most exciting thing that came out of that first night from the all-star weekend was obviously my guy, Michael Buble talking about doing shrooms because that's ridiculously and hilarious. Um, Austin Matthews in Toronto win, whatever. All in all, what'd you feel about uh, the games in Toronto? I mean, overall, like I thought this was one of the better all-star games from my perspective. I love from an entertainment correspondent perspective, how they also incorporated a lot of pop culture like that. People have been begging the NHL to be up with the times. And I think this year, from that perspective, All-Star game-wise, they really succeeded. You get Tate McRae, which people had said, Pete Blackburn, shout out to you on his, like, What Chaos show, had uh, mentioned, like, Tate McRae should be at the All-Star game. Say less, Tate McRae was there. Justin Bieber, still mad at you because I hate those jerseys still. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but it, it was cool to see him. And I love, too, how during warm-ups, the Biebs was out there shooting pucks and whatnot. So, shout out. Overall, I thought it was better in a lot of ways. The Biebs just living his best life. Did you see he cropped out Nathan McKinnon? Like, the ongoing joke was that there was a picture of him and Sid Crosby, and he purposely leaned more towards Sid so he could cut out McKinnon, which he, in fact, did do for his Instagram photo. Yes. Classic. Yes. I saw that. I loved it. I'm not surprised. <laughs> The Beebs is the Beebs, and he's going to do whatever he wants to do. I think he's made that very clear. You know what? That's true. He made it, it clear was by designing those all-star jerseys. <laughs> 
rough, rough scene. Do you think Cole Sillinger continues to be in the most awkward position of his life, having seen Tate McRae do all the things and get all the love in Toronto this weekend? Well, one, did you see how hot she looked in her performances? Yeah, yeah. And have you seen the comments online? Like, everyone's like, imagine your ex-girlfriend showing up to your place of employment that you weren't even invited <laughs> to. Like, oh, like that. When you put it that way, that's bad. Like, that is not great. He's not winning right now. He's not winning life. And I haven't looked at his Instagram comments, but now that we're talking about it, I'm going to do that right when we're done recording because I just... If he hasn't turned his comments off yet, I don't. He probably did he, will. did he cheat on her? Apparently, one of her okay. exes did. She has like two high profile exes. Cole Sillinger's one. I have no idea anything about that guy, so I'm not gonna like sit here and be like, oh yeah, yeah. I think I, I think so. But one of her exes did. She has songs about cheating in her new album. So see, I don't know. That again, we'll do it for the Kirsten Curl Entertainment Correspondent. Thank you for educating us all on Tate McRae once again. We appreciate it. You, you do You're the welcome. Lord's work. Thank you. The other big exciting thing that came out of the All-Star Game, the Olympics are back. NHL players can go back to the Olympics starting in 2026, which will be in Italy. Um, I'm looking to book a flight to Italy if anybody wants to watch my children because I want to be there. I think that sounds amazing. Spaghetti and hockey uh incredible you guys think i'm unbearable during the world juniors i am even more unbearable i promise you during the olympics when the competition is at its best i love the nhl players going back into it they will also be back for the 2030 in france and next year kirsten instead of the all-star game which again people love or hate there's no in between a four nations tourney which will feature mm -hmm. teams from canada sweden finland and um <clears throat> the u.s naturally uh how do we feel about the four nations tourney i like it i still loved when they did like rookies versus the north america like that type of vibe where you kind of give a couple more players from other countries the opportunity but do you think players might be more engaged in a four nations tourney versus an all-star game i a hundred percent think players would be more engaged in it but and correct me if i'm wrong because i was trying to catch up on this this morning in the midst of being at penguins practice and just working nahl games it's leaving a lot of like star players out, like right. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. It's taking place in Boston. Mm -hmm. Pasternak wants to play. He said he's not even going to be watching it because he can't play in it. And he would said, and I believe, quote, he would have wanted to play. Yeah, and I don't know if I saw it. Did they announce this? See, maybe you know more than I. When I first saw it, which would have been last week, I don't know that I saw places that it will be held. I saw one will be in Canada and one will be mm -hmm. in. The U.S. So there'll be two different yeah. locations. But if you're right, uh, shout out to Sarah Sivian. I read one of her tweets this morning, so that's what I'm referencing right now. I think yes. I'm referencing it correctly, but sure. again, my mind's all over the place. I trust you. Shout out to Sarah Sivian for forcing the guys to bring their A game on their uh, style outfits. As always, she's doing great things over with the style report. But I gotta say, I mean, the guys look sharp. A lot of the guys looked pretty sharp for that red carpet at the All Star game. They're really stepping it up, and I'm impressed. Also, we are barely one month into the year, and one of my New Year's resolutions has already been achieved. Brandon Duhame did make the style rankings previously. Also give, like, a little CC to Mark andre Fleury because it was by him, so by association he gets mm. credit. The guy's just all around the league. I'm very impressed. They're really, like, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was the style rankings that, like, now they're like, okay, like, yeah, like, I want to be on this to where they're, like, actually showing up and showing out now. Yeah, but people are noticing and I love it. I love the PWHL getting in on the action, too. Yes. Some of those ladies look fire like I can't remember before because <laughs> they were a big part of the All-Star Weekend as well with their three on three tournament. And I thought some of those gals just brought the heat each and every night. I'm digging. It makes me want to like up my style game and maybe we do like another walkthrough you know like we pretend that i think we we're... need to um yeah. i think that's actually necessary preferably get my shoes into the next photo i don't remember it's been a year regardless mm. we need to update that um yeah yeah i'm all for it i love some good fashion in another I... life i think i'd be a stylist i did find a pair of shoes that I kind of wanted, but I know I wouldn't wear them, but they were very you. They were the same gal that makes your sparkle boots, but they were like, had roses on them. They were like oh, black. Oh, I know exactly with, the pair. You know what? Yes. Yeah. Did I you order some? No. Why not? I don't know. You should. I might. I, they're very cute. I just, I know I would never wear them, but I was like, I kind of really want them, but I was like, I got to leave that. That's Kirsten's thing. Thank you. Um, I'll think about it. I'm okay. definitely looking for new ways to always step up the shoe game. So I'll yeah. take it into consideration. 
Would you have if rather gone to-, to send me shoes? Feel free to. I'm a size eight and a half. And before people ask, no, we do not have um, a feet finder profile either. So we just let's move that out of our heads. But honestly, with this yeah. inflation, maybe I should. <laughs> You cut out whatever you said, but that's probably fine. I said with this inflation, maybe I should. Oh, start yeah, them. that's true. You know what? Someday. I'm not, I'll never knock it. Don't knock it till you try it, right? Um, things to try. Would you have rather gone to Turks and Caicos, where it looked like the bulk of the Minnesota Wild players went? Or would you have rather gone to Costa Rica, which it felt very much like a single Swede only trip? Because I saw Jules Eric's neck and Jonas Brody, and I don't know if others were there with him that were not on the uh the turks and caicos excursion or what that was uh where would you have rather gone i have an idea of where you would have rather gone but let's just hear you um, say it. i would love turks and caicos it's on like a destination list for me but you know my love for jewel and Groves, so yeah. i'm definitely like thanks but no thanks i'm going to costa rica with the boys mm-hmm. so enough said right there enough said i mean can't go wrong with either right it no it's a absolutely nice absolutely not i break. love both of them i know i don't blame you however there were teams that did not take a break quote unquote there was no pause in news you have the canucks going out and getting elias lindholm from calgary zach parisi prior to the break goes to the avs that was a little minor one um and then the jets secure sean monahan from from montreal um that's two top center rentals that are already uh, out uh trade deadline coming up in March, currently sitting top three central teams are your Colorado Avalanche, followed by your Dallas Stars. Winnipeg Jets, top in the Pacific, are the Canucks, Vegas, and Edmonton. Currently, the Kings, who fired their coach, um, his first wild card spot as they continued their downfall for the season. And the St. Louis Blues have eked their way up into that wild card, too. With Nashville, Seattle, Arizona, Calgary, all ahead of Minnesota, only the Ducks, Sharks, and Blackhawks are worst. Kirsten, that brings me to the biggest question of the day. We'll dive in more about the Wild and answer your questions in our second segment. But is this the worst Wild team since 2018-19 when they finished seventh in the Central? They only got 83 points. It was a 37-36-9 and record. Missed the playoffs. Um, a lot of eerie similarities. They allowed 237 goals Excuse me, in that 2018-19 season. Currently, they have allowed 166. I don't know. I mean, is it going to is it going to best that? Is it going to be the best of the worst? Like, are they going to be worse than 2018-19 or is it going to be on par? I think they're going to be worse this season. And we've been so spoiled in Minnesota. So I really do forget about the seasons we haven't won. Like, yeah. haven't made the playoffs. Like, getting to the playoffs is one thing, but you need to win in the playoffs, regardless of what other people say like you don't you you know what you know what I'm saying (laughs) Uh, so I don't fully remember that season to be quite honest but I do think right now we're just worse and it's not even because of our record and the kind of pace we're on to match up with that it's like I mentioned like the way we've been losing games or like when we have gotten a win sometimes the way we've just barely squeaked by and now I do think injuries have played a huge factor and why that has been the case because we should be better than that team on paper and we're just not yeah uh funny i so i was doing a little research right i was doing a little of my job if you will went back and looked at what happened in 2018 19 because like you i i remember it i was on the beat for maybe like the third season that was the paul fenton year that's when they got rid of nino niederreiter for victor Rass. that's when you got rid of your charlie Coyle to boston and he found out from twitter that's when you got rid of mikhail granlin at the same time like a day before his wife gave birth right i mean those three core players were on the move one for ones now granlin brought back fiala uh donato for Coyle and nino niederreiter for victor Rask, as i mentioned so i don't see that happening i don't see you're losing any core players here necessarily but get this Between November 13th and January 15th, the Wild had won just 11 games out of the 28 they played. They lost Dumba for the year, courtesy of that fight in Calgary. They had the Miko Koivu injury, um, and they had also signed very early, very controversial three-year extensions. That was to Devin Dubnik and Alex Daylock at the beginning of the year. Now compare that to your Minnesota Wild, Kirsten. From November 12th up until now, up until the break, they've only had 14 wins. They've lost Jared Spurgeon for the year. They signed three-year contract extensions to some people that had others questioning it. They've then faced injuries. I just, it's very kind of funny. This is kind of the the lot that they have. I mean, I don't know what you do. I don't think it's worth even saving, to be honest. I just, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't know what you do. 
history always repeats itself and you pointing all the similarities out. Yeah, it's creepy. Right. Like, I don't know what else to say? I don't like it. <laughs> like, I'm kind of worried we're going to get some crazy trade that makes no sense, like a Paul Fenton did, and just be like, what are we doing here? Like, why? You know I'm just going to say because history repeats itself, that's probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. March 8th is going to be here very soon. It is. There's something's going to happen, but I don't know what. And oh just, I feel we're so strapped. I don't know what really oh, there was also yeah there were also like poor bruce boudreau had a heck of a season because he was locked into these roster spots and he's like i don't know what to do so i mean similarly dean evson slash john hines both of them are in the same boat i don't know i want to get to more of that we will dive in deeper because we have your fan questions that we're going to answer so t- we're gonna take a quick break we'll be right back Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here. Now is the time to choose you and get healthier the Livia way. When you join Livia, you'll receive a personalized and doctor recommended program tailored to your unique goals and lifestyle. Join Livia today and you'll get the first three months absolutely free. As a Livia ambassador, one-on-one support was key in me hitting my goal weight. I am still down over 30 pounds. Keep trucking toward that end goal. I can see it in sight. I couldn't be any closer uh, if it weren't for the help of my one-on-one support at the Woodbury Clinic. Join Livia today and get your first three months absolutely free. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Breakthrough medical weight loss options now also available. And we're back. All right, we'll lighten the mood just a smidge, Kirsten. All right, let's just bring it up a level. Brock Faber, named NHL Rookie of the Month in January, leads all rookies in assists, second behind Connor Bedard in points. He's got 29 to Bedard's 33. Marco Rossi actually in third for points and second in goals, by the way. We love to see that. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Brock. We've had enough of our We Love Brock Faber um, (laughs) attention on all of these podcasts, and he is well deserving of it. But um, I just wanted to give that shout out. I did not realize that Kirill Kaprizov was never named Rookie of the Month, even during his Calder year. He was never Rookie of the Month? No. It's Brock Faber's the first Minnesota Wild player in history to be named Rookie of the Month. I did not know that. Fascinating, right? It is. Yeah. So there you go. Poor there you Brock. have it. More reason to love that kid. He's truly, like, exceeded all expectations. Like, I don't even know what else to say. Again, the, yeah. love my defenseman, love Brock Faber. Live, laugh, love Brock Faber. Live, laugh, love being back. Uh, the Wild are back, obviously. Pat Maroon still hurt. He got hurt. I told Kirsten. I think it was it was either the Anaheim game or who did they play before Anaheim? It's a blur. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. all a blur. <laughs> that team, whoever they played, but it was one of those two games that he got hurt. He has moved to IR. Jake Lucini has been recalled. Vinny Letary, Adam Raska, Marc-Andre Fleury appear to be back. Jonas Brodin was sick. Uh, at practice today, on their first practice back, but it's expected to be fine. The Wild don't play until Chicago on Wednesday in Chicago. Kirsten, let's quick punch out the week ahead. So you've got Chicago on Wednesday. They host the Pittsburgh Penguins on Friday, which is Mark andre Fleury's 1,000th game honor. Uh, by the way, big soda stick drop coming that day, an exclusive soda stick hockey lodge collaboration. So be sure to stay tuned for that drop coming out pregame on Friday. And then they're in Vegas on Monday. What do you think they go in these three games for a record? One, one, and one. Win okay. against Chicago. Okay. I think they win in overtime to Pittsburgh. So They're going to lose to Vegas. So then it's two, one, and oh. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I was, a, <laughs> I don't know. Overtime confuses me on the score sheet. Sometimes. Yeah. It really yeah. does. Okay, OT Dub oh. versus Pitt. Maybe that's my blonde it. moment of the day. We'll chalk it up to that. We'll chalk it up There's to time that. Time change because I'm on East Coast time. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I I haven't gotten much sleep. You're in the land of Sid the Kid too. It's just it's crazy. I saw him this morning, much smaller in person than I remember. It was funny. I was thinking, like you know, he's always just sitting at his stall when I've spoken with him. I've never actually seen him stand up. I don't think. You know. Yeah. Like whenever I, I go over and I'm just like, hey, like, Sid. Yeah, I was seeing him skate at Penguins practice, and I was like, you are smaller in person than I remember. Mm. I'm going to go 2-0-1 oh, as well. No, 0-1 okay, so oh, is an overtime loss. To... Overtime loss to Vegas. You really think that they're going to take Vegas? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know with this team anymore. That's what This is what they do. They bring you on this roller coaster of emotion. That's what the Minnesota sports teams do. That's what the Minnesota Wild are doing. So, yeah, they're going to beat Chicago. They're going to beat Pittsburgh. Um, and they're going to lose to Vegas in Vegas, but it's going to be an overtime loss. Why not? Why the heck not, right? 
Let's go with it. We got some questions for you to uh, to kick out here before we let Kirsten go back to her life on the road in Pittsburgh. Um, Okay, so from name can't be blank. Does Billy want to set the market for rentals this year by selling earlier than others, or is he going to wait until the eighth of March? I think he's going to wait if he really does anything. Like I think he's feeling the pressure to do something, but at the same time, like. I've never been good at math, never been good with numbers, never been good with money (laughs) at that as well. (laughs) I have no idea what I would do if I was in his position. I think he's going to do something, but I have no idea what. I think he's going to wait. I think he continued because I think he feels a little blackballed to doing something if the team keeps underperforming, right? Like I feel absolutely you can't just sit idle and not do something. But again, he's limited to what he, I don't, I don't know if you're Bill Garrett, I don't know what you do. It's a hot steaming pile of, you know, what that you're sitting in. So, um, I think if anything though, he does wait quite a bit longer. I don't think it'd be early. I mean, you've already seen, like I said, some top free agent rentals go in Lindholm and Monaghan. So Bill Garrett doesn't exactly have, and Pat Maroon, the name that we were talking about just last week being on IR isn't exactly helpful. So next question coming from Derek F. If Metellig... Uh, Danilia Yurov's team, the team that he is currently playing for, if their offer really is as low as it's being reported of 30 million rubles, which is about 330,000, do you think that pushes Bill Guerin to sign him ASAP? Not really. I mean, that's my opinion. I don't think it, they wanted him to stay over there. Like they had an agreement for like, again, I read this when I was on the road. So like for another year, I don't think just because of that, there's a huge rush, my personal opinion. Yeah, I would agree. I think especially if he's coming over anyway, he's going to spend at least a year in the American Hockey League. It's not somebody that they're looking to input right away. He definitely is a guy that they're excited for that obviously I think is going to have some good chemistry, hopefully with Kirill Kaprizov in particular, um, just having that Russian similarity in common there. And he's uh, Daniil Yurov has been having an outstanding season, no doubt. But I think there's no reason for Bill Guerin to rust. Again, going back to the situation that this team is in right now, it doesn't matter. Like, you can't just ride it out. Let's ride it out. It'll be okay. Uh, next question coming to us from Christopher B. Since the play on the ice has been lack- lacking, let me ask you about uniforms. How would you feel if they make the 78s the permanent uniform? Bonus question, what name would you choose for the PWHL Minnesota? Can I give my opinion first? Of course. Absolutely not. I do not want the 78s mm. as a permanent uniform. I barely want them as an alternate uniform. That's a very hot take. I know a lot of people aren't going to like me. We're not the North Stars. For a reverse red show, all of that, loved it. It was cool. I still like the 78s, but that's not our identity. I would much rather see the Wild change it up and do something else. Like, I'm honestly getting kind of sick of the 78s. It has felt like they have had the 78s a ton this year, right? Like, I have noticed that. I'm like, good Lord, how many times are we going to do this? So for that, it does kind of wear on me. Like, oh, okay. Like, it's not part of the, oh, cool, they're here. I obviously love them because, but mostly, here's the reason I love them, you guys. I hate the red and green colors. I cannot stand the red and green. It's not Christmas year round. I'm sorry if that makes me a Grinch, but I'm loving the Kelly green. I think it goes nicely with the yellow. So yes, that has the North Star nostalgia. But for me, it's just simply because I don't like the red and green. I did make fun of the red and green as a child because I'm like, it's Christmas. But there's so much more you can do with that. You can do green with like light red accents. I just want to see them switch them up. Yeah. it's it's time to switch them up. Speaking of switch up, what would you call PWHL Minnesota if you had your if you had your way? I would definitely I don't have a specific name, but I I don't want the white caps. I think that's too I, I want to see something started all new altogether. I know there's a handful of people that are like, yeah, PWHL should have kept the white caps name. That's one for sure. I don't want to see happen. It's a new team. Again, I want to see a new identity form. Um, I want to play a little bit on like the nature wilderness part of Minnesota, the lakes, because it's a huge part of you what like the wild. Are. Did you vote for the wild? I did not vote for the wild. No, <laughs> I'm not saying that's what I want it to be either, but I want something that's authentic to minnesota something with a little bit of edge i that's a really bad answer to that question because it doesn't it's giving an answer without giving an answer Mm. but it's kind of along the path of what i would like to see 
Uh, you know, somebody, and I apologize, I forget who it is, but all the credit in the world to whoever brought this up in my mentions, and I'm sure they're not the first person. They had mentioned Purple Rain, R-E-I-G-N, as an homage to Prince, and then you have, like, Let's Go Crazy as your song. Okay, I really like that. So That's good, really right? Good. But I don't yeah. think we'd be able to. Maybe, like, Prince's estate would be like... Yeah, but you'd have to get the rights from Prince's estate, and I don't know if that would be possible. To do Purple Rain, though, if you speaking, spell it R-E-I-G-N? It might be too similar. But, no, I love the idea. I'm just thinking of it from a logistics standpoint. Yeah. Someone's, you know, that's smart. Smart. Good on you. Yeah, maybe 10,000 Lakes. No. Just kidding. That's a terrible no. name. Maybe the Walleye. It is terrible. No, that's also awful. Oh, I love the Walleye. Yeah, we're going to start that. Let us know what you guys think. What we should call PWHL Minnesota. I know Superior was initially reported as the possible name. I believe that one is out, but I'm excited to uh, to carry on that conversation in our comments below. One final question coming to us from Libby B. Do you think the Minnesota Wild consider re-signing Flurry if he doesn't retire this year or are they set on having Jesper Valstad and Gus next year? I don't think that they're going to resign Flurry, and I truly have a strong feeling this is his final season. I really do think he will be retiring after this year, um, but I also think that's just the way things are. They want Wallstead up here next year with Gus, so I just it's getting ready to kind of turn the page and start a new era for Wild Hockey. So I really think next year they want to prepare for that come 2025. Yeah, I have nothing to add to that. Mark andre Fleury gets the right to choose what he wants to do next year, too. And that very well might not even be wanting to re-sign here in Minnesota. It might be back to Pittsburgh, up to Montreal, what have you. Kirsten, I know you got to run, so we're going to wrap up this week's episode a smidge early. But as always, we appreciate you guys checking us out. Don't forget to leave your comments. Let us know what you thought. We will try to get to more cues with the views later on this week uh, as the Minnesota Wilds start to ease back into their schedule here. Don't forget, at home on Friday, big 1,000th game, Soda Stick will have a special t-shirt and hat drop uh, in collaboration with Hockey Lodge. As always, shout out to Soda Stick. Code Bardown Beauties will get you 15% off all purchases at SodaStick.com. Shout out to Livia. Three months absolutely free when you sign up today. I mentioned Jesse Pierce and the Bardown Beauties. Royal Credit Union, Jim Beam, Grain Belt, Talk North. You guys are all awesome. Um, have a great rest of your week. Go hockey. Near, 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 near.